All right. Well, good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to 25 Minute Career Intelligence, a conversation with Wes and Allison Felix. And I am very excited about this particular conversation. Um, I've been conducting similar interviews with uh, individuals in the sports industry for the last month or so. And so I um, thought it'd be cool to be able to do something with a couple of folks that I have a, a long history with as well. So we'll, we'll get to uh, hear a little bit more about them and from them in just a few moments. And so I wanted to um, go ahead and to start by um, introducing um, Wes. And so, um, and this is just a sampling of who Wes is. Um, but Wes is a sports agent. He's a photographer. Um, he was track and field captain for the University of Southern California's uh, track and field team, um, former professional athlete, and aspiring older brother. And you'll learn more about why he is considered an aspiring older brother. And then next, we have Allison Felix, who's a six-time Olympic champion, nine-time Olympic gold medalist, excuse me, nine-time Olympic medalist, world record holder, ambassador, and activist. And then last, and certainly but not least, um, a wife and mother. And um, there's so much you know, more you can share, share about Allison. Um, she has accumulated 25 uh, global medals at the Olympics and world championships, and also is the most decorated track and field Olympian in history. So if you don't know who she is, then um, I, I can't, I don't have anything to say to you. So, um, so at this point, I wanted to go ahead and to um, get our conversation started. And so I wanted to just, first of all, ask um, you both to share where you are in your career journey and where you anticipate or hope to be in the foreseeable future. And so Wes, let's start with you. Yeah, of course. Um, well, first, thanks so much for, for having us here. This is really exciting. Um, and I would say, yeah, where I'm at in my career right now is, is a place of really um, finding comfort and finding my voice in it. I think, you know, when I started my career, um, I started representing Allison was my first client and I was 25, I believe, when we started working together. And, you know, there was so much that was unknown there um, and so much that, that I just still hadn't learned yet. And, um, and I think now I know I have so much more to learn, but I also have a little bit, a little bit more under my belt. So, um, so I, you know, I look forward to kind of the next chapter and the next phase of my career. Um, and I think it'll be a time where it isn't so much about figuring out how to do things, how they've been done in the past, but it'll now be a time to figure out new ways to do things and how to really create change um, and have, you know, an impact in uh, in my industry and in my profession that is that is bigger uh, than just, you know, getting deals done. Great. And what a time there it is to actually create change and to make impact. Mm -hmm. All right. Terrific. And Allison, how about you? Yeah, I would, I would say that I'm in a similar spot as well. You know, it's interesting, you know, as an athlete, you almost feel like you have to set yourself up to have two careers, you know, your athletic career and then what you do next. And so I think in my athletic career, um, it's been a really interesting time because I do feel like I've found my voice and I've been able to kind of um, almost shift from just, you know, the performances on the track, but to focusing on some things that um, I feel are important that have affected me and to really kind of um, just use my platform to speak about those things. And then also just as I think about, you know, life beyond track and what that's going to look like and just really setting myself up um, to make a smooth transition, really focusing a lot of time and energy on um, preparing for that as well. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting place to be, you know, but really enjoying it and embracing it and excited about um, what's to come. Great. And we've all been excited about uh, what you've been doing, you know, as we're saying, just to find your voice and express it. And um, it's just been, been amazing, and that goes without saying. And so before I go further, I just have to say just real quick, um, I wanted to share just a quick backstory um, with everyone. So um, as I mentioned at the top, I've been doing um, interviews like this um, for about a month or so, about 15-minute um, career interviews with professionals in the industry, sports industry. And so at one point, my wife said, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do something with Allison. And I was like, yeah. And then we thought about it a moment. It'd be great to do something with both Wes and Allison. And so it's going to be a lot of fun just to be able to get you guys on and just to chat. And so, as I mentioned before, we have history and it's, it's you know, the combination of, you know, family history between uh, the Felixes, the Jones, and the Roberts, a lot going in. And so, um, so I'm, once again, I just want to show everyone, give everyone context about what this is all about and why we're so excited to be here with you guys. So um, before I ask 
um, asking my next question, I wanted to read something, a quote by Allison, and this was a quote that was in her podcast. Embrace this moment, the moment where you feel like you failed. Look at what you can learn from it and take out the positives. Every defeat, every failure, every missed mark, there's something to take out of that that can prepare you for something later. And so I thought that was a nice segue to my next question. So I just wanted to ask you both just to share some important lessons. It could be one, two or more from your career journey. And uh, Wes, let's start with you. Yeah, I think that, you know, there is, there's so much importance around understanding what failure is and what it isn't. Um, I think a lot of times we view failure as, as an attack on who we are inside. And I think that that's what really can, can crush us. Um, but realizing that failure is, it's a necessary part of life. Um, and if you can change your perspective on it and not let it attack your worth, um, there's a whole lot of power in it. Um, and I think more than just power, there's, that's where growth comes from. That's where you have to um, look at a situation and say, you know, well, how do I do it differently? And I think that's how you find new ways. Um, and so, you know, for me, I think there would be um, a whole lot of failures throughout my, throughout my career. But, um, but I think one that I, you know, could really, could really think about was in my professional running career. Um, there was, you know, as my career was, uh, I guess it kind of ended abruptly due to injury. And, and there was part of that that felt like, you know, I didn't accomplish the goal. There was, there was a failure there. Um, but I think once you can continue to move forward and, and get back up and take that next step, you start to realize what the actual purpose of that perceived failure. Um, and really it was just time for a certain chapter to close, to create room, to create space, um, for what you're supposed to do next, you know, and I think that you can't, the room isn't there if, uh, if you're still holding on to something, you know, you can't, you can't grab the new thing if you're still holding on to the old thing. Um, and sometimes I think that old thing, you know, it gets pride from our hands and we don't like it, but, um, <laughs> but that failure, you know, that, that opportunity to grow is, um, it's what can set you up for change. And I look at, you know, what felt like a failure in my running career set up an opportunity to build an agency and get to work with Allison and to build an entirely new career that um, that didn't come out of nowhere. It's it's what I wanted, you know, it's the job that I wanted to do since I was in high school. So it didn't come out of nowhere, but I just had to create the room to actually do it. And once that happened, um, what Allison and I were able to do together you know, I don't think we ever could have imagined that's what it would have looked like. I think we felt, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get the job done. You know, we'll make sure you get races. We'll make sure you have sponsors. But I think what we've created together over the last um, decade now is, is so much more uh, than I know I ever would have, would have thought going into it. And, and now I look at our roster um, of the agency, you know, and, realize that we actually get to impact young lives and help guide them through a point in their life that is, that's so important um, at a time when so much is being thrown at them. Um, we really get to have like make a lasting impact. And to think that that impact on people's lives came from failure, um, it just lets me know um, the failures are okay. The, the important part is just get back up, keep moving forward after them. Well, she said a lot of good stuff. And one thing that stood out among what you said too was not allowing failure to attack your, your work, your personal mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is, that's very profound. And so thank you for sharing that along mm -hmm. with anything else. Mm -hmm. So Allison, how, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, um, I think it like, what Wes was speaking about as well, like in sports, it's very like clear to see failure. And because a lot of, you know, athletes define success by winning. Mm -hmm. And so for a long time, I think in the early part of my career, you know, I, that's the only way I define success. You know, it had to be winning. It had to be gold medals. And so I remember in 2008 competing in Beijing and it was my second Olympic games. I had got silver in the first games and you know, it's been a long time now. I feel like I've done all the right things, dedicated myself, um, you know, done everything that was asked of me. 
And it was different from the first time at the Olympics because now, you know, I had responsibilities and, you know, sponsors expect things. And, you know, at the same time, I was a young woman trying to juggle, you know, uh, friendships, relationships, and just life in general. And so I think there was a lot on my plate. Um, but to go through that Olympics and then I got another silver medal to the same exact person, it was really devastating to me. And I know like looking from, you know, other angles, you know, it's like, it's still a silver medal and it's this amazing thing. But when you have really dedicated your life to something and day in and day out made so many sacrifice, sacrifices, it can be difficult to deal with that, um, you know, feeling like you know, you have nothing to show for all these years of dedication and um, you're right back where, you know, you were four years prior. And so for me, it was, you know, a really difficult time and it was, you know, devastating and hard to, um, you know, a, a real challenge. But in hindsight, I look back and I, I see that as like the defining moment in my career because it was the, the single time where I had to look within and ask myself, how much do I want this? Like, how can I change? Like, what can I learn from this? And how can I be better from this? And so now looking back, I'm so grateful for that experience because I feel like it prepared me for success later on. And it really, um, it just really changed things for me. And it was that moment that it was really, um, it was really the turning point for me. Great stuff, Austin. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, and it's just amazing as you both have Said, you know, we have that failure in a moment and just how disappointing and crushing it be. Um, but we look back on it and you see that it opened doors for you and it just obviously made you better. So great. Um, so for both of you to have achieved what you've achieved individually and then collectively, um, you've had to have people who supported you along the way. And so I just wanted to ask you just to um, share one or two people who have been influential in your career. And Allison, let's start with you. Um, yeah, I would say um, Wes is probably one of the <laughs> one of the people who has been super influential to me. I think just we have a special relationship, and um, even like he, how he was speaking earlier about just I think we never could have imagined that um, what we could create together. But I think Wes has just really given me um, a lot of confidence and um, has just really helped push me into areas that. Um, I wasn't so comfortable with before. So whether that is like helping me find my voice to speak on issues or, um, you know, just branching out from just the lane of track and field. I think that's been um, super inspiring and just how he has lived his life and just everything that he's done as well. It's just, you know, I think a lot of people look up to their siblings and, you know, it's, it's like that for me and it continues to be like that. Um, and yeah, he's just an inspiration. And then, um, God, I think I could I could talk about a number of different people, but um, I'll also um, I think Jackie Joyner Kersey is someone who has been really influential in in my life, not only my career but my life as well. Because you know she's my coach's wife, but she's also you know she's been a phenomenal athlete um, and just an even better person. And she has really shown me what it looks like to just invest in someone's life and to pour into it wanting nothing in return and want to see them grow. And I think like women in a competitive industry, that's not common. Um, and she's really shown me what that looks like and shown me what I want to be for someone else. And, um, and so she's, she's really impacted my career, but also my life. Hmm. Okay, great, great stuff. So, um, Next, I wanted to ask you both to um, share um, a defining or very memorable moment in your career. And you, to a certain degree, you probably alluded to that a little bit, but if there's something that you feel that, yeah, this, this particular experience really defined me, or it was just, it was just a great, great memory um, for you to, to uh, share that. And so, uh, Wes, let's start with you. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I have no idea what Allison was going to say, but I kind of do. But so, so they might, this might be a good one to kind of tag team and answer together. But, you know, I know for me, it is hands down um, when we made the decision to stand up to Nike and challenge them on their um, maternal protection policy or, or lack thereof. Um, I think that was absolutely the scariest time um, in my career, but it also is the thing that I'm, you know, without a doubt, most proud of. Um, I think, you know, when you start, when you start seeing 
real change happening and real change being, you know, a company like Nike saying, we're going to change the maternity protections that we provide for our female athletes. And we're not going to have any financial penalty against them in any way for 18 months um, after they become pregnant. You know, that's something that uh, it just kind of lights a fire in you. And it, it makes you realize that, you know, the purpose is not how do you do a bigger deal or how do you do more deals or how do you, you know, win more medals or put your, your clients in a position to win more. You realize that the purpose is how do you put your clients in a position to change the world um, and to do that in a really positive way. And I think a lot of times athletes is view, are viewed as, you know, inspiring figures. And that's really important. You need people who inspire you and who, who push you to do more, but, I think you have to ask, what is the more that they're pushing you to do? Is it score more points in your high school basketball game? Is it, you know, work harder and don't quit because you need this kind of work ethic? And those, those things are all really important. But I think that um, the shift that we're starting to see in sports and that I feel really proud of is our athletes not just being inspirations, but being leaders and actually coming forward and saying there are, there are problems out there. And if we're not going to address them and we're not going to speak to them, then they're not going to be addressed and they won't be spoken to. Um, I think, you know, kind of as we're recording this and having this conversation, you know, the NBA playoffs are being boycotted um, over real issues. And I think the respect that I have to see those young men um, taking a real stand that comes with it, it's scary. You know, and I think a lot of times like people can look and say, oh, well, I wish I could make that much money. Like it would be easy, easy <laughs> to step away if you made this like, but one, you have no idea what people's situations are and you don't know how it looks or works or anything like that. But I think it's scary, period, you know, to stand up for what you believe is right. And so um, in my career, that's, that's absolutely, you know, what I am most proud of and it's hard to imagine there's going to be something down the road that will top that, but, um, <laughs> but we're going to keep on trying. <laughs> All right. Well, definitely kudos to you and Allison for taking that stand to as scary yeah. as it was. So Allison, I'll give you a chance to jump in and add to that or come up with something maybe different. Yeah, no, I mean, I completely agree. I think, um, yeah, right in line with what Wes said, it, it's definitely what I'm most proud of. And I think a lot of times when, I think what I learned in that situation as well is like what you see value in, because I think as athletes, you know, you think about sponsors and, you know, who is going to help you accomplish your goals. And a lot of it, like you think about financial support, but there is value in so many other things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that was really something that um, as we got deeper into it, that I really took away is that, you know, <laughs> there's value in what a company stands for and it's, there's value in, if they really live that out, you know, it's one thing to be a master marketer and it's a totally different thing to see it really lived out through, um, weave throughout, you know, the employees of the company. Um, and so when we took that stand, it was, it was terrifying because we weren't walking away and going to something else. You know, there was nothing else on the table at the time. And so um, it just made me really look at things differently and what I valued and where I place importance. And I think it's really, um, you know, it, it helped me see that I wanted to empower women and girls. And that's, um, you know, that's the path that I wanted to move forward with. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, you, you talk about, you know, wanting to change the world and it seems like this huge, enormous thing, but then you get this opportunity, what in a very like practical way that for me looked like just sharing my story and talking about, you know, what we were going through and what was happening and what I had seen, because, you know, this is, this was an issue for women ever since I started running track as a teenager and as a prof professional. And then when I spoke out, um, there was just a pouring in from women across industries who maybe didn't have the exact same situation, but felt similar where they felt they weren't valued, you know, um, that they were discarded once they decided to have a family and, and just, you know, so many issues. And so to have some, you know, small impact on that area and to contribute to that is definitely a, 
you know, a, a moment that is super special and I feel really proud of. Great, great stuff. Boy, you guys have given me so much. So we're near, near time. So I wanted to um, wrap up with a couple of questions, but I wanted to um, share something that I wanted to ask you both just to quickly reflect on. So you, you recognize this picture, obviously, a very iconic moment for the two of you. And so um, can you just maybe just quickly just talk about support, supporting each other, what that's felt like, what that's looked like, or just anything you want to share around that? And uh, Allison, we'll have you start. Yeah, I mean, for me, yeah, I think it goes back to just that special relationship that, um, you know, Wes and I have. And it's, it's, you know, he is my manager, but he also, you know, plays that big brother role and, um, you know, does it all together. Um, and so that moment was, um, I had pulled my hamstring in the final at World Championships. And um, I remember exactly when it happened and I, when I went down and there was a, a language barrier, I think we were in Russia, I believe. And, um, and they were coming over with the stretcher and they couldn't figure out like how to pick it up and they weren't understanding like what was hurting on me. And I remember I just like looked up and Wes was there and I'm like, how in the world, like <laughs> not an easy thing to like literally be on the track at world championships. And he just came, I don't know where he came from, some <laughs> flying down from somewhere. But I think that's like, that is what he does for me is that support. Like, you know, when you can't even see it coming, um, he's there. And I think you, it's so important to have that. And it's so important to have someone who can see, um, who can see further than you can. Like when you're in the midst of a struggle or a challenge, like someone who can see that vision and who can support you and, and pull you through. And so I think just our family in general has been that for us, um, you know, in our lives and through our careers. Great stuff. Uh, Wes, did you want to add anything or are you? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, last, I just want to ask you both, just to, just quickly just share Toss out one thing that you think people should know about you as much as been out there but what's one thing that you really want people to know about you and then finally any final words of advice to our audience particularly students um high school college students who want to get into the sports industry and so uh wes let's, let's start with yeah. you. um i would say um something that i would want people to know about me you know is just that i think my my real desire um is to lead with love and I think like to think about what that means in the context of business, you know, that can be a very personal, um, a very personal thing and something that you live in your personal life. But I, I also don't think it fails you in the way that you approach um, business. And, you know, I think that can be phrased in a lot of other ways that's, you know, treat people the way that you would like to be treated or, you know, don't, don't offer a deal that you wouldn't take. I think there's a lot of ways you can say it. But ultimately, for me, it comes down to lead with love and it spans all areas um, of life. And I think, you know, if there was advice that I would give to um, to anyone interested in the sports industry, I would just say it's one step at a time. You know, there's a lot of times you're trying to figure out, you know, maybe if you're sitting there dreaming, how would you ever be able to sign LeBron James one day? Like, well, I don't know, that day's not today, but you could start <laughs> with, with one step you know, and you don't know where that one step is going to take you. And I think if you come back to, um, to leading with love, I think that you're going to find yourself in exactly the rooms that you're supposed to be in, uh, working with the people you're supposed to work with. Um, and, you know, that, 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 um, that dream isn't, isn't anywhere near as far away as you may think it is. Um, but it all is just going to start with one step. Okay, great. And Allison, how about you? Yeah, for me, I would definitely tell students, you know, especially interested in the sports industry, that there are so many jobs that that entails. And, you know, I think a lot of times we focus on, you know, athletes and, you know, we want to play and we want to do this and we want to do that. Um, but I would just say to be open, you know, it's, it's such a young age to kind of um, pick a career path and to stick to it. And so I think by being open to what that looks like, you know, manager, um, an agent, you know, on the production side of things, like there's so many ways that you can be involved in sports, you know, um, a sports attorney, like so many things. Um, to, so to explore that and see, you know, where your interests lie and what your passions are um, and, and just see, you know, um, where life takes you, but really to be open to whatever might come your way. 
Very good stuff. You both were so awesome. It's funny, you know, we were, I was already impressed with you, obviously, and haven't known you, but just being on this call and just hearing your reflections just up close for myself uh, was uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, so I thank you both for taking time out of your very busy schedule to spend with us. And I just want to give a quick shout out to your, your parents, you know, Pastor Paul and uh, Sister Marlene, and also uh, Cousin Joy, who has been very special <laughs> to you both as well. I had to put it out there because you can probably see this as well. But thank you guys very much. Keep doing the incredible work that God's gifted you to do. And um, I look forward to obviously staying in touch and just um, seeing what's next for you both in your respective career journeys. Thank yes, you so for much. having us and thanks for doing this. Yeah, this is great. Okay, you guys, take care now. All, All right. right. Bye. Bye bye.